Hi everybody, it's January the 16th, and by now most folks know that in-person worship at Our Saviors has had to be suspended in the wake of the rise in Omicron cases of COVID-19. So that makes us even more glad that you found us here online. You know what? We're just a couple of miles from church, and this is the court party rental. This is their showroom, and it's amazing. They have all manner of things you might need to host a big, grand event. There's stemware and table settings. They have beautiful colors and things to set on tables, everything to make a gathering lavish and lovely. Maybe you have had to host a big event, maybe even a wedding. Um, you know, Jesus and his mother so long ago were themselves invited to a huge community banquet. It was the wedding feast at Cana in Galilee. But while they were there, the terrible thing happened, and it was an embarrassment. And had there been Yelp at the time, they probably got terrible reviews. But Jesus did something that changed it all. There were there the stone water jars for purification, gallons and gallons of water that Jesus changed. It changed the event, it changed the world, it changes us. Let's go see. How are you doing? I'm at the best possible place to be to answer that question here at the font, where water changes me. Water today in the lessons is changed to wine. Wine changes me, water changes me. The wine and the water that are the Lord's gifts to us change the world, I pray. I trust, I believe. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let's pray. Lord God, source of every blessing, you showed your glory and led many to faith by your Son. Transform us by the spirit of his love that we may find our life together in him, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name, that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken and your land shall no more be termed desolate, but you shall be called, my delight is in her and your land married. For the Lord delights in you and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. Reading from Psalm 36. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains and your justice like the great deep. You save humankind and animals, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God. All people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you and your favor to those who are true of heart. 
A reading from John's Gospel. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. And when the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now, standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water. And they filled them to the brim. Jesus said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Good morning, it's Miss Taryn, and it is time for the children's message. Have you ever been to a wedding? And if you, maybe you haven't been to a wedding, but have you ever been to or had a birthday party? I'm sure you all have, at least been to one. Now think for a minute, what? makes a birthday party special? What sets it apart from other parties? I mean, I feel like there's a lot that you could answer with that, but the big thing, birthday parties have cake, don't they? Yes. Now, what do you think would happen if you went to a birthday party and you go through the party, you're about halfway done, it's time to cut the cake, and the host forgot to pick up the cake from the grocery store? That would set quite a damper on the party, wouldn't it? Yeah. Now, now this is what kind of happened in our gospel reading today. There was a wedding at a town called Cana. They got there, they started having the party, and they ran out of wine. Now, the wine was just as important to the party in those days as cake would be if you were to have a birthday party today. Everyone would be thirsty, the party would have to end. It was a big deal if they ran out of wine. Because normally, wedding celebrations in those days would sometimes last for days. And so for a wedding to end early, not so good. So when the wine ran out, Jesus' mother came to him, telling him of the problem, and said, Jesus, the wine has run out. So Jesus sent people to fill these big jugs up with water and bring them to him. And do you know what happened? He turned the water into wine. He performed this great miracle. And 
what they found was when they tried the wine, it was actually really good. It wasn't like the cheap stuff that you bring out at the very end. Jesus saved the day and the people could carry on celebrating the wedding. In church, when we meet in person, we have communion. And that's a little bit of bread and a little bit of wine. And that bread and wine is a reminder of how much Jesus loves us. When we drink the wine or juice, we remember Jesus. Jesus fixed the problem at the wedding by turning water into wine. And Jesus works in our lives to do that too and fix our problems when we come to him. He forgives us when we make mistakes and helps us come closer to him. So when we share communion at church, we remember Jesus and are reminded of his amazing power that he has in our lives. How you doing? <laughs> really, really. Uh, how are you doing? How's the congregation? How's the community? How is the country doing in this hard, hard season? Now, as we enter what is the third year of the pandemic, uh, it's, it's been tough. There's no long lines yet at the bank, no runs at the bank, but sometimes it is hard to get a roll of toilet paper. How are we doing? You know, the, the country has been through all manner of things. The country has been through wars, even a civil war. There's been for us periods of near complete economic collapse. There is now this heartbreaking reckoning of our history of racism and sexism and hypocrisy. We've seen storms and floods. We've seen droughts and fires, and so much of it is our own fault, and so much of it is preventable. So how are you doing? How are we doing? In a recent PBS Marist poll, 25 million Americans surveyed said that violence that force may be justifiable in restoring the former president to that office. I, I, I shake my head. But do you remember this, that back in 2019, polling showed that 
18% of Democrats believe that violence may be justifiable if their candidate lost. Paul Solman is an economic correspondent for public broadcasting, and he reports that 15% of Republicans and 20% of Democrats, get this, believe that the country would be better off if significant numbers of members of the opposing party just died. Wow. This is Amina Amdin. She was among thousands of protesters in Texas one day. The, the protest was convened and gathered. People were there to demonstrate against white supremacy, there to demonstrate against bigotry and especially against violence uh, against the Muslim American community. Well, during that demonstration, as you might imagine, in that part of the country, there were also what? Counter demonstrators. Other people showed up to protest them. These protesters showed up with Confederate flags. They showed up with banners supporting the former president and they showed up with MAGA clothing. This is Joseph Widenecht. Amdine recalls the encounter that she had with Widenecht that day during the protest, how there was shouting and finger pointing, how there was there was insults and there were clenched fists. She remembers too that there were protesters on her side who found their way to circle around Widenecht. They, they surrounded him with taunting and shouting of their own. Eventually one of them reached up and snatched the mega hat off his head. Emdine says that it was in that moment that something in her snapped. She said, you see, I am an American Muslim and I have grown up wearing my hijab all my life. I have been surrounded. I have been intimidated. I have been insulted and people have tried to snatch the hijab from my head, she said. Both Amdin and Widenecht realized that at that moment, an important line had been crossed. They both knew, they both understood each other's dehumanization. You know, these days, uh, Joseph and Amina, well, they manage civil conversations. In fact, sometimes they even appear in public and talk about what the experience meant for both of them. Now, truth is, they don't like each other. They, uh, they don't agree with each other and they haven't changed their minds. But something has changed. David Isay of StoryCorps likes to remind us all that it's hard to hate up close. John's Gospel has an account of the wedding feast at Cana in Galilee. And, uh, you know, that's honestly, that's my favorite story in the whole New Testament. When I sit down with couples ahead of time making plans for their wedding ceremony and we do premarital counseling and yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I ask them to look at a series of, of possible texts that we could use for the event. And when they pick that one, I love it. I love it because it gives me this chance to talk about God entering this moment and changing things, how there's abundance and joy and mirth, that the embarrassment and the sort of shame on the, on the caterer gets turned into joy and life and love. But what if that little story is about more than that? What if it is about the realities of the time? Because we forget about the shame. We forget about the judgment. We forget about the loss of status in those communities, that banquets themselves were means by which one kept their, their place in the order of honor and shame. So to run out of wine at a party, well, for us, not a big deal, but for them, that may have set a family back for a very long time. John includes a detail in the story. And in fact, he gives lots of attention to describing in, in some detail 
about that, this part of the story, about the, the water jars, do you remember? The six stone water jars filled with what would be hundreds of gallons of this liquid, right? And he goes on to describe their purpose. They were for ritual cleansing. That is to say that these were the markers of the tradition. These were the devices by which you found out if you were worthy or not. This was the way to kind of keep track of who belongs and who doesn't. These jars would have been the way to, to keep the bad guys out and the good guys in. So what does Jesus change in the moment? Wow. Wow. Jesus changes their purpose. Jesus changes their place. Jesus changes their contents. It's as if Jesus is, is quite willing to take the system, take the rules, take the expectations, and turn them inside out. So how are we doing? How are we doing? Terrible? Yep. But that's not the only thing that's true. Isn't it also true that we follow that one who would change things then and change things now? Isn't it also true that we follow that one who would rather die than kill? That we follow that one who loves us even now? Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us go now to the banquet, to the feast of the universe. The table set and the place is waiting. Come everyone with your gifts to share. I will rise in the early morning. The community's waiting for me. With the spring in my step I'm walking. My friends and my family Let us go now To the banquet To the feast of the universe The table set And the place is waiting Come everyone With your gifts to share God invites All the poor and hungry To the banquet Of justice and good where the harvest will not be hoarded So that no one will lack for food Let us go now to the banquet To the feast of the universe The table set and the place is waiting Come everyone with your gifts The Spirit of the Lord makes us bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. By your Spirit, fill your church with gifts of faith, healing, and prophecy. Unite your followers across congregations, denominations, and geographic boundaries. Open our hearts to recognize and celebrate signs of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your creation reflects your abundance. Bless farmers, migrant workers, orchard keepers, ranchers, and all who tend the land. Protect food and water sources that all can eat and drink and be satisfied. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant wisdom and discernment to all in leadership positions that their decisions will build safe and just communities. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. As Jesus provided in a moment of need, pour out healing for those in need this day, especially Holly, Tristan, Hannah, Carter, Grace, Tyler, James, and Adrian, Cheryl, and Jordan, David, and Aspen, Neva, Bev, Larry, and Larry, Tracy, Bill, and Bill, Bryce, Doug, Jim, 
John, Krista's mom, Nora, Nancy, Beth's mom, Carolyn, our preschool and all schools and teachers, and first responders, those providing health care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the life of Martin Luther King Jr., for Bev Bruner, and for the gift of all saints who modeled the way of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You see us for who we are, and you delight in us. Embrace those of us struggling with self-worth, wrestling with self-identity, or facing significant life transition. We pray in confidence and faith and hope, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. Amen. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Hey, guys, peace, everybody! Peace be with you. And now for the news. Change for Change has raised $357 and it's heavy. Thanks for your noisy offerings. We are giving that away to local charities, 20 bucks at a time, you get to choose. Talk to me, text me, call me, let me know how you can be part of that $20 giveaway challenge. Join us for Climate Change. Every Sunday morning online, that's the adult learning class, Climate Justice. It's going really great. Family and Friends Gathering is also tonight online. Join us for Stone Soup and you will find craft kits to be picked up at preschool, at church, or some downloadables. Kids Club Ministry, you'll find some things coming to you at home for that way too. Look for an email from Mrs. Cooper and please join Taryn at noon on Sundays if you're in middle school by Zoom starting January 23rd for this time that we are not together. We're not together, but we are still connecting. In-person worship is suspended temporarily. Small groups are not. Please contact any one of these ministries if they're yours and find out how you are staying connected and in touch. Thank you for choosing to stay in touch with your giving plans. We are grateful for the over 150 households that turned in a plan for giving and especially those who chose Give Plus. Sheila Bartlett says thank you. January 30th, we are having an annual meeting of the congregation. We have a budget to pass. That will be 10 o'clock. That will be on Zoom. I look forward to seeing you in your square. Find the link online and more to come. Bev Bruner, there will be a memorial service for Bev. Beloved Bev, February 5th at 10. It will be here. It will be a very small in-person gathering, uh, but please, if you really need to be part of that, let me know, and thank you. Thank you, whether we're together or apart, we are so grateful for all the ways you give and share your gifts and your offering and your talents to keep the many ministries going. <music>
another blessing. The God who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and who calls you by name. Bless your going out and your coming in now and forever. Amen. Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.